Good night. From MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Start as we are underway from MetLife Stadium. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result that he opted for the touchback. The Buccaneer offense taking the field with all eyes in the stadium glued to their quarterback in season number 21. His first, of course, in Tampa, the great Tom Brady. If you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you have a chance to get Tom Brady, you take that opportunity, even though Jameis Winston is your quarterback last year, threw for over 5,100 yards, but he also threw 30 interceptions. Tom Brady threw just eight in New England last season. They figured that can be the difference to get that team into the playoffs and maybe back to the Super Bowl. Brady now on first down. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. Well, whenever you talk about players that really broke out in the 2019 season, you better add Chris Godwin to that list. Over 1,300 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. He was second among receivers last season receiving yards per game at 95. This guy combines great body control excellent strength and terrific route running ability to become a really big downfield threat. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. James Bradbury there to make the tackle. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. High throw, but he makes the catch. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants 35. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Tom Brady, of course, a member of the Bucs now, but it was these Giants who were his Super Bowl nemesis. Twice they were able to take down Brady's Pats in Super Bowls 42 and 46. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And not much running room down to the 32. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. It's a pickup. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. 
And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That catch good for five. It's third down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now a draw play. This is Jones. And he'll take this one down near the 15. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. It's a gain of a yard. And it's third down. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. And that's the way you get an opening drive going. Pick up the first down, convert on third down, and how about doing it old school style? Doing it with a run and play. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now they'll throw with Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And he can't quite get there, tackled down at the one. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Bucks take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And that one gives the Bucks a seven to nothing lead. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it's Ronald Jones that polishes it off with a touchdown run. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. 
And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. A little bit of broken record time, partner, because we know that this young man, Daniel Jones, was a surprise pick at number six overall. But I thought that he got better and better as the year went on in his rookie year. A lot of trial by fire. Needs to protect the football better while in the pocket. But when he's at his best, he can throw it and run it. And he's an ascending quarterback. 24 touchdown passes as a rookie. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll run for the first time with Saquon Barkley. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Second and six. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Now this pass into the hands of Saquon Barkley. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, it's really no secret if you've got Saquon Barkley on your roster as an offensive play caller, you're going to be creative to find ways to get him to football. He was a little bit dinged up last year, so he only had 52 catches. But that catch and first down we just saw there, expect more of that this season because remember in his rookie year, he had 91 catches. And anytime he's got the ball in his hands, he's a threat to go the distance. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. That's the end of the first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Nothing. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Now Saquon Barkley. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Antoine Winfield up from the secondary with a tackle. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. On second down, here's Barkley. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. He finds his way into the secondary again on this drive. They might want to try getting him down a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, what do they call that? Third level run, first level being the D line, and linebacker second level in the secondary, the third. When you block it up well and you make the secondary do all the tackling, that will wear on a defense. So a solid run by Saquon Barkley and another first and 10 here. Going to give this time to the tailback. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Jones, and he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. That's Shaq Barrett, last year's sack leader, gets in there to register another one. I think it's overstating it to say that he came out of nowhere, but did anyone see 19 and a half sacks coming from Shaq Barrett last year? And even after he became an acknowledged guy that you had to block, he still was able to get to the quarterback. Expects to continue on that level, and there he is, adding to his totals. After that sack, third and long, tough spot for Jones and the Giants. 
throwing Jones. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Graham Gano for the Giants' field goal. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. These kickers now it used to be that a 50 plus yarder was cause for celebration now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny when we prepare for a game when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers. It's interesting isn't it to find out they were all state quarterbacks receivers defensive backs all state wrestlers right baseball players. We're finding athletes all along and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. Takes this about five yards deep, and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had three and two, and their three-game win streak snapped Thursday night in Chicago, week five, losing 20 to 19. And of course, that was kind of billed as a rematch between Tom Brady and Nick Foles opposing QBs in Super Bowl 52. And Brady had never lost on Thursday night in his career. He was 7-0 prior to that one. And Charles, it really had a bizarre finish. To put it mildly, there's Tampa Bay trying to make their final drive with a chance to win it. You expect Tom Brady to lead something really strong and give them that opportunity. And somehow he lost track of downs. That happens to all of us, right? We're all human. We saw an expected out of maybe the GOAT, right? So it does happen. He's showing the four fingers to the official like, uh, isn't it fourth down? And they're like, no, that was fourth down. So a major surprise. Love how his head coach Bruce Arians jumped in and defended him. Tom Brady never really truly addressed it right after the game. Bottom line, though, this Tampa Bay team, they, they lost a tough one on the road, but they're still going to be a playoff contender. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. The throw bowler, Chris Godwin, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. Well, we always talk about you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. From the gun on third down, Brady. And that is incomplete. Brady's Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Back deep, Golden Tate. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. Saquon Barkley and the Giants offense set to kick off their next drive. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore. And down he goes, a bucket air sack. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Oh, you know, that did not feel good. Vita Vea with the sack there. And we know he's a big-time presence on the defensive line, especially against the run. But he'll surprise you with his quickness and his upfield agility in order to get to the quarterback. If you're blocking him, it's going to be a long afternoon or evening, a tough proposition. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Operating from the gun, Jones. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, 
that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. He's going to let this one go deep. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. And that one hurts defensively. They force him into third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. Jones pass. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw again, Jones. Oh, he's gonna look downfield for Bark. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. A gain of 32 that time. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive. And these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, and these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way. Oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got it? Someone cover him. That type of indecision can open up to even more big plays. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they're onto something. And I think a lot of that is simply if you get it to him in space, more times than not, he's going to get more yardage than you expect out of each play. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And incomplete. It's now third down and less than a yard. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Here's Jones, throwing on fourth down. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. It's Daniel Jones fighting Evan Ingram. And the Giants have taken the lead. Giants. They took a pretty big risk right there going for it on fourth down. But hey, not only did they get the first down, forget about that, they got in the end zone. Yeah, because normally you're just thinking, can I get enough yardage to get it past the sticks and pick up a first down? Instead, they go for the end zone and get it done with no margin for error. Remember, fourth down, they went for it. 
and it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. it in the middle of the end zone and no effort to bring this one out it's a touchback at their own 25 yard line and Tampa Bay trots out there now it was still more than a minute to go in the half time to try to mount a drive and I would think that they would have to this is today's NFL you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity you can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face and analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity down Brady looking for Godwin and he's got him complete and able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40 now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Shotgun now for Brady. He's got his running back, LaShawn McCoy. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady hooking up with Mike Evans there. And the Bucs are going to retake the lead. And if you blinked, you probably missed that touchdown drive. It happened in a hurry. I was just putting mustard on my hot dog, and all of a sudden, he's in the end zone. I've got to do a better job of paying attention with this quick strike offense. I thought you were going to tell your wife about the hot dogs in the booth thing. I just did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did. Ryan Extra point Succo try now for Sacco. And that makes it 14-10. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First and 10 at their own 26-yard line. And the ball goes back to the New York Giants, and obviously, Charles, not the way that Giants fans wanted to start this season, 0-5. It's not a silver lining, but they have been in quite a few of these games, including week five at Dallas, losing 37-34. Yeah, I would say, though, if you look at the NFC East and how down it is, they're not out of it, right? I mean, they're only a couple of games out of first place at this point. Yeah, you just mentioned before it wasn't a silver lining. 
that last part you just brought up, that is a silver lining. Just a couple of games back in the NFC East. So if anyone could ever get on a semi-hot streak and win three in a row, they could break this division wide open. And the Giants have to say to themselves, why not us? Now here's a great opportunity to gain some ground coming up. Two games within the division, host Washington, and then a Thursday night matchup in Philadelphia. Both of them out there for the taking if the Giants can put it together. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. From the gun, Jones will get this out to Barkley complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Now Jones on first and 10. It's complete to Golden Tate. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Jones throwing on first down. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Shaquille Barrett, his second sack of the night. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Operating from the gun, Jones finds his tight end, Ingram. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 20-yard line. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half from, who else? Tom Brady. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. Taking it about the one. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. New York ready to go again offensively. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. 
You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, Jones. Out to the right here to Shepard. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. To Sterling Shepard. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 45-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Two yards, good enough for a first. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Jones now. On first down, they'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he'll take this from one 47-yard line to the other, a gain of six. Brings up second and four at the Bucks 47-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Jones. Open target here, Darius Slayton. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 37. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. They go back to the ground now with Barkley. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Barkley on the carry. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And five at the 32-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll run it again with Barkley. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Operating from the gun, Jones. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 25-yard line. First down, Giants, Jones to Ingram. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Here's Jones on first and 10. It's brought in left side by Tate. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Second and six at the 20-yard line. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. This is Barkley. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Tackle made at the six. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, 
That's a big day. They'll go to Barkley again. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. It's a first down following a gain of three. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't it? the 13 now they work on first and 10. Out of the shotgun they run with Barkley. And this carry despite the extra effort will be stopped short of the 10. Just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine. Brings up second and nine. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and nine. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Giants are once again going to retake the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Help out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Takes this about five yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Bucks ready to take over once again, and now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. better down a score in the fourth quarter than Tom Brady. This is first and ten. To throw, it's Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. And the Giants have it. It's picked up. And this is taken into the end zone. A fumble recovery on a Giants touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. point. 
And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. following that fumble return. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. 25-yard line. set to begin their next possession. And yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. And here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 46. Now throwing on first down and completing it. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Throw left side, complete. That's McCoy. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 30. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. On first and 10, here's Brady. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. He's got Evans. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a two-score game, obviously. Every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible.
First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Again, it's Brady. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. down a bit of a disaster and now on second and goal back even further now Brady this will be caught at about the five and he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line I give him a dozen on the pitch and catch but now they're up against a third and goal and that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down they didn't get all of it back but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. One receiver to the left is Evans. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. From the gun, it's Brady. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and this is back down to a seven-point game. Buccaneers, 17. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The offense takes the field, and we turn our attention to Saquon Barkley. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And four at the 31-yard line. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Right there, 54, right there, right there, 54 Mike. And let's pin the mirrors back and go. go. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Tate. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. 
They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll try and run some clock here with Barkley. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Again, it's Barkley. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. A give to Barkley out of the gun. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. From the 37, they work on second and six. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw, out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A big game there, and that should certainly be enough to put this one in the win column. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed, like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field, they can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. Down to a knee goes Jones, and that should just about seal it. So a victory here for the men in blue, the New York Giants. And it took a big fourth quarter to do it, but they were able to get the job done, and that's the bottom line. <laughs> no doubt about it. And let's face it, they had to be more than nervous in the fourth quarter. But a lot of that was their own doing. I think you observed during the game, their energy level just didn't seem to be there. But in the fourth quarter, somehow they dug deep and found that extra bit, right, that reserve tank. They hauled it out. Offense scored some points, defense held them, and lo and behold, they walk away with a win. Maybe expend a little more energy than they expected to, but they'll take it. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From MetLife Stadium, good night, everybody.